Hey guys, today we're reading two more stories from the Neckbeardius subreddit. If you would like the chance for us to read some of your stories, don't forget to submit into the subreddit and we might get round to it. Who knows, if we'll have enough of them, might do another video. Yeah, we'll see. So we'll see. keep submitting and put some memes in there too because I really like memes. Yeah. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and we'll see you at the end of the video. An Army of Ducks and Hats by Lord Rogai. This is a story about the most chaotic one-shot I have ever run. I invited a group of my tabletop role-playing game friends over to play a one-shot, where they would get the opportunity to playtest some homebrew magic items. Sadly, only two of them showed up. Once they sat down, I hand each of them blank character sheets. Before they got the chance to roll up stats, I started the game's introduction. You wake up in a barn. You have no recollection about who you are or why you're here, but you do remember that you need to free the other party members from jail. You have blank character sheets that you fill in along the way as you figure out what your stats are. It's quite interesting. That's very interesting, yeah. You don't have any equipment, but you do have a large sack of gold. I inform them that one of them was a goblin and the other was a kobold. After they exited the barn, they find themselves in a small coastal town with a large magic item shop on a hill. Welcome to Krakus Tavern Inn and Magical Emporium Traveller. How may we help you? A family of kobolds yelled at them as they entered. Clearly, this was the place they would be getting the playtest magic items. This is a cloak of elven kind. It will always have an elf in it, see? Some elf was sleeping in their shop and they were trying to sell his cloak. <laughs> <laughs> a wand of produce flame. Be careful, it only has one charge. It's a match. <laughs> <laughs> the boomerang of returning half an hour late. What? Arrows, <laughs> arrows of returning. They tried to kill the shitter. Sadly, they didn't buy the boomerang of returning half an hour late, but they did buy rope, the hat of breeding, what? A hat that would breed with other hats producing hybrid hat offspring when no one was looking. It was an Akubra. The tomb of the secret language of ducks. The Sword of Simon, a sword that glows in the presence of some guy named Simon. <laughs> <laughs> and the bagpipes of invisibility, that turns you invisible when you play them. Oh, what the fuck? The goblin got the hat and the sword, while the kobold got the bagpipes and the tomb to the secret language of ducks. I find a duck to talk. Kobold. Excuse me, Mr. Duck. Duck. Hey, I'm waddling here. <laughs> <laughs> this was their first allies in the game. Duncan the Duck with a New Yorker accent. Despite having a potty mouth that the locals assumed was innocent quacking, he was more than willing to help the players and is a genuine kind soul. Oh, Aww. nice to be Duck. Kobold. Do you know where the jail is? Duck. <laughs> now you got to be quack. <laughs> quack. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I don't know where the jail is, but I do know there's a quacking map of the town in the library. <laughs> <laughs> And there's a master key in the governor's bedchambers. And thus the plan was set. Sneak into the library, steal the map, steal the governor's keys and break the party out of jail. A stolen trench coat later and they walked into the library with the goblin on the kobold's shoulders. <laughs> Duncan waddling behind them shortly after. They sat down in a quiet corner of the library and waited until no one was watching them. Scapering up the high bookshelves, they tried to get a better view of the library's layout. The goblin. I leave my hat on the table with a trench coat and an open book so it looks like someone has gone to the toilet or something. Me. Are you sure? Goblin. Yes. 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 Me. The hat is gone. Goblin. Perfect. <laughs> what? After walking along the bookshelves, they eventually find a diorama of the town and where the jail is, the governor's house and where the docks are. Goblin. I'm going to try and cast Prestidigitation. Hopefully I am wizard or something. Me. What are you going to conjure? Goblin. A pen and paper. We can steal real paper and a pen later. <laughs> Me. You're capable of casting Prestidigitation. At this point the kobold tried out some class specific abilities to see what she was. Barbarian rage? No. Monk unarmed strikes into the air? No. Druid wild shape? Yes. Immediately she wild shaped into a duck and waddled towards Duncan and tried to be as inconspicuous as possible. After a few combat encounters with city guards and a man named Simon, <laughs> <Fox sake. laughs> he wanted his sword back. <laughs> 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 
The goblin figured out he's an arcane trickster and the kobold was some kind of druid. Now the only challenge left was getting into the prison unnoticed. The kobold waltz in and using the bagpipe... <laughs> fuck's sake. Using the bagpipes of invisibility with the guards going, Where is that terribly loud music coming from? The goblin tried to cast any spell he could think of that he might know that could be used in this stealth mission. He casts Rope Trick. For those of you who don't know Rope Trick, you make a magic rope rise up into an invisible pocket dimension you can hide in. Now what they did is not correct, but I was unfamiliar with the Rope Trick spell. And how could you say no to an invisible kobold playing bagpipes, holding on to a floating rope like it's a balloon? <laughs> that's connected to an invisible pocket dimension that's hiding a goblin rogue while a duck waddles behind them. <laughs> they found their party's jail cell. They were an orc rogue, a dragonborn druid. Once the door was opened, the orc and dragonborn proceed to beat the crap out of them. Through the fight, the orc and dragonborn told the party that they were defective simulacrum, worthless clones, inferior magical copies of themselves. They were the orc slash dragonborn's escape plan and had amnesia because they were only born yesterday. Orc. Let's go steal the governor's jewels. Dragonborn. Successfully this time. At this point my players were out for blood. Kobold. Duncan. Do you have any cousins or anything? Ones who would be willing to pick a fight? Duncan. Considering what I just saw, I could rally the flock for you buddy old pal. <laughs> <laughs> we can quack. <laughs> Oh, those thugs for you. What the fuck am I doing with my life, honestly? <laughs> With a small army of ducks, they marched up to the governor's house, ready for retribution. The orc was in the governor's living room. The first duck flew in from the chimney. Orc, you're a bit lost, aren't you, fella? Then another duck came through the window. Then another. Two became five. Five became twelve. The orc's confusion turned to terror as the goblin kicked down the door as six more ducks flew in behind him. The ducks swiftly charged the orc. Feathers flew everywhere. Wings beat loudly. Bills pecked aggressively. This gave the goblin advantage in all his attack rolls, triggering sneak attack every time. The kobold druid walked around the house looking for the dragonborn. There was only one place she hadn't searched yet. She walked down to the basement and there the governor was hogtied and the dragonborn was holding a small chest under her arms. Dragonborn. Do you need reminding that you're a defective copy of me? The dragonborn shapeshifted into a brown bear. The kobold being a lower level, shapeshifted into a black bear. The fight went as expected. When the dragonborn won the fight, she climbed up the steps with a victorious smirk. Dragonborn, I can see a little bit of you and me. I'll let you live in my shadow for now, weakling. Perhaps I can beat your ass again someday. The dragonborn opened the door out of the basement and an avalanche of Akubra hat hybrids engulfed her and pushed her down the stairs. A weird turban with an Akubra brim along the cloth unraveled and started to strangle her. An Akubra top hat jumped onto her arm and pinned it to the floor. An Akubra beret went over her face, blinding her. An Akubra beanie climbing, on to, climbing into her mouth to suffocate her. Oh, Fuck. Jesus. <laughs> After both the orc and dragonborn were slain, the hats parted ways, like Moses and the Red Sea, so the kobold druid could walk up the stairs. She picked up the small chest. The goblin picked up his hat and put it on his head, and the two adventurers and their army of ducks and hats waddled off into the sunset. That was really nice. I really like that. I was really nice. I really enjoyed that one. The Legend of Shalom Goldstein by Mal Holiday. This story comes from a game of Vampire the Masquerade I ran a few months ago, with my friend playing the title character, Shalom Goldstein. Fuck <laughs> me! Shalom was a fresh college graduate and a member of a fraternity in New York City. Before he became a Tizimich vampire, that's the best I can pronounce it. For those who don't know, Tizimich have a power that lets them shape flesh, allowing them to augment their bodies as well as the bodies of others. He was basically playing a violent, sadistic, flesh-crafting Slanesh slash corn worshipper. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah. The legend of Shol... It's Sholomo, it's not friggin' Shalom. Shalom. Shalom? <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we're too deep in now. We're too deep in. I'm going to change it now, okay? Sholomo. Shol 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 oh, me, I got no idea about look, these words. 
The legend of Sholomo starts when the party is tasked to pick some patrons, a man and a woman, out of a vampire-owned bar. The patrons turned out to be hunters working for the government who don't know too much about the supernatural. So naturally the party decides to tie them to chairs in the basement to torture and interrogate them. The party gets far just by pointing guns at them and threatening their families. However, Sholomo thought this was taking too long. So he goes to the mail agent and asks him, Are you a bruiser or a schmoozer? <laughs> The agent went from pissing himself scared to just confused, gives the wrong answer. There was no right answer. So Sholomo decides to say, well, I'm a bruiser and you better start schmoozing. Then he punches the guy in the nuts. <laughs> okay. Okay, it's cock and ball. Sure, <laughs> I ask if he's going to pull his punches. He says no. He punched him in the ball so hard, one of them explodes with a bloody pop. <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> He did not expect to do that much damage and tries to flesh craft a new testicle for the guy. He feels his role and gives him testicular oh, cancer. Oh sake. my god. The section ended with the party mercy killing the melee agent and executing the woman. During the next session, the party was tasked with infiltrating a drug den. The party then drove up in the limo owned by the ventry of the group. He had a retard seat installed for Sholomo. <laughs> the party face, backup face, an infiltrator, were making good process and were about to get in. When Sholomo breaks out of his seat, steps outside and says out of character, Hey, can I be Peppa Pig? He's not normally this autistic IRL, he just likes to fuck around. I didn't expect him to succeed on the role, and he didn't. He got a critical success. So there, Sholomo was a normal human from the neck down, and a deformed pig paste from the head up wielding a machete and shotgun. They proceed to undo all the work the rest of the party had done by charging the guards and cutting off one of their arms. At this point the player had to leave for family stuff and the rest of the party decided that Sholomo goes in the trunk in case, <laughs> encased in bike helmet, duct tape and bubble wrap. So I really enjoyed the first one. I thought the first one was actually a lot of fun I love with the, the ducks. I them waking up and they didn't know what yeah, class they were. Yeah, that was done really well. I really they enjoyed that. They just got told, you're a goblin. You're, You're a kobold. kobold. Go work it out. I, I, I really, I, really like that. something about fucking stupid kobolds that oh, I really I enjoy. I really enjoy just how oh, helpless they are. They're great. But uh, no, that what the first one was just a wee bit too short. And you know what YouTube's like, you know, it's just it's just the way it is. You have to make and them over. And then we'll have this other story that was quite short. So. But, but look, seeing as we did it, maybe we can get more shroom. Because like, you know, I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. But it was very, very short. And don't be put off if you have a short story put them yeah. in. Because we'll eventually have enough short stories a, to make a bigger story. Yeah, exactly. So, and if the good enough it doesn't matter they're going to be used yeah you know what i mean i really enjoy so them put off just because yeah. it's not long yeah put it into the subreddit if you I think it's reading. good if you think it's good if you enjoyed it if you had a lot of fun playing it yeah put it on in do it you know what i mean you may as well you may as well what's the worst that could happen but look as always guys hope you guys enjoyed remember like comment subscribe hit that wee notification bell all the other good shit you know how it is check the links down below and we'll see you in the next video bye <laughs>